What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, we're going to be doing the rankings of the Shield Hero collaboration characters after the buffs of the original ones, and also with the release of Victoria and Glass, we're actually going to be ranking them in this, uh, you know, kind of tier list here, and, uh, you know, talking about which one is going to be the best to the worst, guys. Um, this collaboration is special in the sense of, like, you know, the older characters did get passive buffs, and so a lot of them have maybe changed in, you know, how strong they're actually going to be and so in this video guys we're gonna be going over you know each character and where they actually rank on this list if you guys enjoy videos like this man definitely make sure to hit that like button and subscribe i definitely do appreciate all the support on the channel as of late guys and with that out of the way man let's hop in and let's start with now fumi here and discuss where we're actually going to be placing this character on the tier list all right guys so now fumi is a character that after his buff is one of the best characters in at least pvp in the game now he's not going to be good in you know all things in the game game i would say you know he's mainly just a character that's going to be taunting and drawing damage away and so let's talk about what you know makes this character really good and uh, where he shines and then we'll place him on the tier list so for his passive here if the hero assumes a stance at the start of the battle allies basic stats increase by 30 percent of the hero's defense and then human allies damage dealt increases by 30 percent and human allies damage taken decreases by 40 in addition each human ally participating in the battle has their hp increased by five percent and then for the rest of his passive here applies one mark of wrath on self up to six every time damage is taken from skills during the enemy's turn and increases the hero's damage dealt with all target attacks by 35 percent for every mark of wrath on the character so now fumi is going to be able to give your team at least specifically the human team a 30 percent uh damage dealt and 40 percent damage reduction alongside the fact that when he is stancing up he's going to be giving them 30 percent of, of basic stats based on his defense so that's obviously a a really big bonus right there and now Fumi is able to deal a ton of damage with the amount of marks of wrath he's able to stack because that actually coincides with his uh you know attacking skill right here where this is actually an aoe skill guys and so because you know the mark of wrath are going to be applied on now Fumi, and it mentions here that uh, all target attacks are increased by 35 percent for every mark of wrath that's going to be really, really strong for this AoE skill right here, which is just going to be a curse effect preventing ultimate movie gauge from filling if they do not use a skill, scaling up from 110, 165 to 275 of defense. And then now Fumi here also does have the stance card, guys, where on turn one, it's going to taunt, increase defense-related stats, and also remove all debuffs applied to self and apply a limit uh, to the number of debuffs applied to the, self, to the user uh, by one, which is really good. And that's going to scale up to two turns, 50% defense-related, and then another two turns, 80% defense related so that's really really strong right there and then moving on to his ultimate here this is where he's able to take advantage of the you know marker wrath where he has the wrath ultimate which is going to be at four to six specifically 20 percent damage dealt for every mark of wrath and it's also going to apply an all stat lower decrease effect on the enemy for a specific amount of turns and this is 20 percent at four to six as well and then obviously the wrath damage single target based on his defense so now Fumi is a really good character guys and right now in the meta in PvP specifically this character is actually in the top team in the game. If you guys watched my tier list where I went over the PvP characters in the game, um you know, human team is a number 1 team in the game right now guys in my opinion. And you know, now Fumi as a character I think is really strong in a lot of content in the game. He's not necessarily, you know, like demonic beast and all that. I feel like he can be a good taunting unit, but he's not a character that's going to be speed running demonic beast. He's not really made for really any of them and in general pve content you're not really going to get much out of this character whereas in pvp i think this character is going to be a very strong character in the sense of you know he's going to be able to deal a lot of damage he's going to be able to draw damage away and he's going to be providing that support for the team where he gives basic stats he gives damage reduction damage dealt specifically for the human team right so that's obviously going to be a big bonus for him now now i'm kind of contemplating where i actually want to place him on the tier list guys but what we'll do for now and I think this is a fair spot, at least for where I have him at. I'm going to put him at the number three spot, in my opinion, guys. I think right now, there are other characters in the game that I do think, and specifically from the Shield Hero collab, that are a little bit higher than now for me in terms of their overall usability. Because at the end of the day, this tier list is not just about one content in the game. Now, Fumi is really, really good in PvP, but that's not going to make or break, you know, this entire tier list here. We're talking about everything in the game. And so it's really going to kind of come down to that. And we'll talk about the other characters as well so let's move on to raftalia here and you know this is very questionable right now guys i might move now Fumi up i might move him down it just depends on how i feel about these other characters as well so let's move on to raftalia 
Alrighty guys, so moving on to Raph Talia here. This is her character and in the Grand Cross uh, for her kit here. Um, for her passive, it's going to increase allies max HP by 300% of the hero's defense at the start of the battle and then decrease allies damage taken by 30%. Now, the buff that she did gain was the fact that she's not restricted to mono blue teams anymore, guys. So this full passive is just usable with any team now, which I guess is pretty good. But, you know, there isn't really anything else being added onto this passive. Whereas now Fumi got you know, the 30% damage done, 40% damage reduction. Raftalia didn't really get anything, but the fact that she has more usability on other teams. So that's kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of a hindrance in her, in her passive right there. But moving on to her Holy Relic, increases damage dealt by allies on the battlefield by 40% if an ally is assuming a stance. So that's obviously based on now Fumi right there, right? The moment now Fumi puts up a stance, she's going to get, you know, 40% damage dealt. And so, yeah, I mean, that that's obviously really, really good, right? And uh, I guess it's for allies too, right? It's damage dealt by allies. So, um... You know, Raftalia was made initially with the intention of being run alongside that character, but because, you know, with the meta and the way it is right now in PvP specifically, guys, you're not really running Raftalia for that. Um, so yeah, right, that, that's pretty much her Holy Relic and her passive right there. Moving on to her skills, guys, she has Flood Single Target based on her defense, 180% of that as well, and then obviously Flood Damage. Um, we do also have for her uh, second skill here, it's going to be Sever Defense, right? So Sever, 170, 255, 425 uh, based on defense. And then for her ultimate here, it's going to increase basic stats by 50% for three turns and inflicts damage equal to 320% of her defense um, on all enemies. And that's going to be at one of the six, guys. So uh, in terms of where Raph Talia actually ranks on the tier list, though, I think Raph Talia might be the weakest character in the collaboration, guys. And, and this, I don't know if this is a hot take. I feel like this is like a, a take everyone agrees with, though. The reason why Raph Talia is the weakest in the collaboration, in my opinion, is the fact that she didn't really get anything buffed in her kit right the main thing that she got buffed was the fact that i can use her now on other teams that you know are not mono blue but the problem with that is that you know what team am i using her on realistically that's not mono blue right like what what team is that going to be and so because of that i feel like raftalia really didn't get much of a buff and so i i actually do think that she is the weakest of the club guys you know she didn't really get much given to her and so i do think she's going to be fitting in the number six spot right there now, moving on to Philo here, guys. Let's talk about her and see what she's capable of doing in the game and where we're gonna actually get a rank her here. Alrighty, guys, hopping into Philo here. Philo is a character that actually did get a fairly substantial buff with the collaboration. Now, for her passive here, the part that got buffed in her passive is actually gonna be this first part right here. Decreases critical resistance and critical defense of all enemies by 30% for one turn at the start of the allies' turn, which is very, very good because what this does is that this re uh, uh, reapplies the debuff every single turn right it's gonna decrease at the start of allies turn so it's always gonna apply it right even though it's it says for one turn um the next part is that when an ally defeats an enemy using a skill it ignores eight percent critical resistance and eight percent critical defense up to 40 percent for each debuff applied to the enemy and increases the hero's damage up by 60 percent when using single target attacks excluding ultimate move against enemies with five or more debuffs so this is obviously a really good passive now guys because you know you have the crit, uh, crit resistance and crit defense lower and so now that's actually working alongside these because these are two separate debuffs here so that's two debuffs on everybody meaning you have a total of already six debuffs on the entire enemy team right now right so that's already gonna be um eight percent up to 40 for each debuff applied to the enemy and so that means that because you already have six it's gonna be a really substantial buff and you're able to get more debuffs alongside that so i think that passive right there for philo is gonna be very very strong and then moving on to her holy relic here guys increases the hero's attack related stats by three percent for every debuff applied to all enemies and that makes a lot of sense too because now we're getting up to 15 uh, 15 times that's what three times yeah that's 45 percent attack related stats i mean that's a big chunk that you're going to be able to get right there when you're applying debuffs so philo is going to get a really massive buff in her attack right there and then moving on to her skills here guys she does have weak point aoe which is going to be triple damage against debuffed enemies and then she does also have a single target which is that you know 200 percent of attack at rank one and it's going to stun on rank two 200 and then stun for two turns to 50 at the rank three and then moving on to her ultimate here it's going to decrease all enemies hp related stats by five percent this is not one of the six guys so five percent for two turns then inflicts damage equal to 630 percent of attack on one enemy so philo obviously is a very very good character from the collab now where am i going to rank this character on this list guys i think 
Um, a fair spot for Philo, I think, is going to be the number four spot. And my main reasoning for this, guys, is because I definitely do think she's going to be better than Raftalia and another character as well. I don't think she's as good as Naofumi, where Naofumi pretty much runs all of PvP. Um, you know, he is really, really good in that sense. And so I don't think Philo is going to be better than Naofumi because if we're really thinking about, you know, PvP, um, you know, Philo is not really doing as much as Naofumi um, for their respective team, you know. So yeah, guys, I mean, Philo is going to be a really good character, and I do actually value her PvE farming ability, because in PvE, because she's able to apply the crit resistance, crit defense lower, you can actually run her as a farming unit, and she will do really well, right? I mean, she has weak point, which is a priority from the AI, and she's going to be able to apply that very, very easily. So I think right there, because she has fairly usable PvP viability and PvE viability, she is a number four. She's not going to pass Naofumi, because Naofumi Fumi's power in PvP is just too strong, but I definitely think she's better than Raftalia in, in all ways at that point, guys. So, Philo is going to be my number four. Let's move on to Kizuna, the last character of the original part of the collaboration. Alrighty, guys, hopping into Kizuna here. This is the free character of the collaboration, just like Raftalia was as well in the rerun. She was the original free unit from the original Rising of the Shield Hero collaboration. Now, Kizuna, in my opinion, back then, if you guys watched my video back then, um, I actually rated her the best unit in the collaboration. We're going to talk about where I actually do rank her on this tier list specifically, but let's go over a kit. So, for her passive right here, in PvE, increases own skill ranks and removes debuffs from allies if the hero deals damage to an enemy with a skill drain the allies turn that's really good because that allows kizuna to rank up this uh you know pierce aoe skill and also rank up this buff skill that she has which you know is the exact same buff card as like red arthur um there, there's a few other characters that have it he's like the main one but remove debuffs from all allies increase basic stats by 30 percent and grant debuff immunity just an insane buff card that she's able to provide and then at the rank two is just going to be straight basic stats to all allies and rank one is going to be for one ally but if you know again as the passive saying whenever we use this skill right here we're gonna rank up this or if i drop the ultimate right and this card is in my hand it's gonna rank up so you're never really gonna be using a rank one kizuna so yeah moving on to her uh or no we'll move on to her holy relic here so her holy relic is going to increase all allies attack related stats by 30 percent for two turns if the hero skill ranks up which is a very valuable effect man being able to increase the attack related stats right there on the entire team just by ranking up her own skills which she's able to do herself from her passive so that's already really really valuable right there and then moving on to her ultimate here guys and this is at one of the six so this will definitely scale up it's going to increase all allies damaged up by seven percent for two turns and it inflicts 400 percent of attack to all enemies so kizuna is a character that again as i mentioned i ranked her above all the characters from the previous collab and so i actually am going to rank kizuna at the number two spot actually now this is crazy because it really depends on what you value more and this is a toss-up for me because i could put now for me number two i could put kizuna number two it's really a toss-up because it depends on what you value in the sense of kizuna is one of the best pve units in the game and the fact that she's a free unit is absolutely insane she covers all pve content that requires you to have a buffer for damage because she gives you free 30 percent attack related she gives you the basic stat buff she's able to provide everything about kizuna is just super super strong guild boss nukes pve you know final boss you know farming she's really good you know og demon pretty much anything that's not demonic beast in pve kizuna is a is a meta unit to run and so i think that she is going to be either a number two or number three and i don't know where i kind of swing with this i mean right now now fumi is really good in pvp but the thing is with pve characters and i think i value them a lot more long term than i would pvp characters because pvp characters can eventually fall off but kizuna who is who is like you know gonna like be better than kizuna literally like i can't even put my words together right guys like who is going to be a better unit in pvp uh pve specifically than kizuna right like no one right so obviously kizuna is not a good pvp unit but because of the fact that she is so she has this like crazy longevity in pve that no unit can really power creep her in terms of what she's doing that you know she gotta be in that number two spot at the very least guys and so now we're coming up on the last two characters here, guys, being the new units from the collaboration. I, I mean, I, I guess you guys can kind of see where it's going from this point on. But let's talk about Fitoria and Glass last. I'm actually going to rank them now, and uh, we'll talk about them, guys. So we have Glass at number five and one for Fitoria. Now, let's actually, you know, go back into the game here, and I'll give you guys my reasoning for why I actually believe those characters fit in those slots. So uh, let's let's talk about it. So Glass um, is a character that 
is pretty good in you know pve content i think she's definitely really good um she is good in pvp as well on an unknown team but i think that glass isn't really doing as much as you know a character like philo where she's per, you know supporting the team and you know Victoria, which we'll get to is doing a lot more than this character as well so let, let, let's just talk about her kit right so hopping into glasses kit here increases the hero's basic stats by seven percent for each unknown race ally participating in the battle the hero gains one soul power whenever an unknown race ally uses a skill conversely one soul power is removed whenever the hero uses a skill and whenever one soul power is removed the hero's pierce rate increases by 30 percent up to 90 when the soul power stock is maxed out the effects are removed and the hero gains a critical chance uh, increase of 30 percent and pierce rate increase by 150 percent for three turns and then the soul power buff itself is going to be uh, 10 percent defense related stats up to three times guys moving on to our holy relic here guys uh it's going to increase the hero's critical chance by 20 percent up to 60 each time one soul power effect is removed from the hero which is pretty good because you're going to be able to easily remove that whenever she uses a skill and then hopping into her actual skills here she has uh soul steal which is a, a new effect damage all 40 percent for each soul power on the hero and then times two pierce right and that's going to scale from 190 to 85 for 75 her second skill here guys is going to be the triple pierce rate card so just standard pierce 200 300 500 and then for her ultimate here she's gonna at one of the six as well which is pretty strong increase all allies basic stats by 30 percent for three turns inflicts damage equal to 400 percent of attack on all enemies and apply one soul power effect on the hero so um yeah i mean glass uh, like her kit overall feels really good and i think honestly this could be technically a toss-up for me like between these two characters but i value philo's you know farming capabilities being able to instantly apply those debuffs i think is valuable and you know in pvp she's kind of in the same boat as glass for me but the the way i i kind of figured out that philo was higher than glass guys is if someone asked me who should i pick at the pity if you're missing both those characters i would tell them philo because i think you're gonna get more value out of philo in the sense of pve content she's one of the best farming units in the game if we're talking pvp i mean she's a pretty good support unit right whereas glass is kind of just a a selfish unit she relies on her allies for her to get her damage and she's a dps character right so dps characters are never always gonna last forever and glass isn't a character that's meta in pvp right now like i i really don't think so and so because of that i actually am going to rank that character in the number five slot and then moving on to fitoria guys she is the number one character in the collab and you guys might be you might call me crazy for this but i think it is the case guys she is one of the best units in the game and let's kind of just talk about it <laughs> so for fatoria's passive here guys increase critical defense of unknown race allies by 60 percent for one turn at the start of the battle at the start of the allies turn applies queen's authority to unknown race allies for two turns limit once and increases all stats of the hero by five percent for each unknown race ally participating in the battle now in addition the hero's damage dealt is increased by 50 percent when using gale and when an unknown race ally uses a skill to deal damage to an enemy during the ally's turn the hero gains sharp talent effects equal to the number of enemies who took critical damage so whenever you crit and let's say i do like a tier aoe and they all get crit that means i max out this passive already for Fitoria, because if the hero has maxed out of the stacks of sharp talents at the end of the allies turn they're removed and the hero uh gains the uh queen strike effect so let's uh, let's cover the uh, effects here so queen's authority is going to remove debuffs and increase critical chance by 50 percent the hero's damage dealt is going to increase by 0.3 percent for every one percent of hp remaining so off the rip Victoria is a support character she's giving you know unknown race allies critical defense up she's giving the queen's authority buff which is 50 percent crit chance um cleansing your debuff start a turn she gives you the you know kind of damage dealt flood she also is providing for herself here that she's going to ignore 15 percent of the target's critical resistance based on the amount of sharp talent she has so you can ignore up to 45 percent crit resistance to pretty much guarantee crit the enemy and then for her final effect here when she's fully maxed out on the uh, sharp talents and they convert into queen strike you gain 50% damage dealt, 50% critical chance, and 250% pierce rate to do a ton of damage, guys. Just a very insane passive. And honestly, she, the way Fitoria feels to me, and you guys let me know in the comment section below, she feels a lot like DK Meliodas, but for the unknown team, because she kind of builds up the same way as DK Meli, where, you know, she's relying on the allies to do some kind of damage a little bit, but she's also supporting the team a little bit too, right? And, and I like that a lot. You know, she has that support, she has the damage dealt, and, and that's really good across both PvP and PvE. 
Um, moving on to our Holy Relic here, it increases the hero's damage dealt with single target attacks by 15% for each sharp talent effects on the hero. So now she's getting damage dealt on top of the fact that she's getting the ignoring critical resistance, which is really good. And then moving on to her skills here, guys, she has Piercing Gale, which is going to decrease critical defense of one enemy by 40%, scaling up to 60 and 80. And then the actual effect on the card is going to be Sever Damage equal to 200% of attack, going up to 300 and 500% respectively. And then moving on to her second skill here, guys, Vicious Tempest. This is going to inflict Gale damage equal to 100% of attack on all enemies. Gale is going to ignore 30% of defense-related stats and give you a times 2 critical damage buff, which is absolutely insane. And then this is going to scale up from 100 to 150 to 220 or 250. And remember, in her passive here, in addition, the hero's damage is increased by 50% when using a Gale skill. So that's already a buff from her passive too. And then moving on to our ultimate here, guys, this is at 2 out of 6, so obviously, depending on your dupes, this is going to change, but applies one uh, sharp talent effect on the hero, applies the queen's protection effect on all allies, and then inflicts spike damage equal to 330% of attack on all enemies, and this is going to increase your attack related stats by 10%, and defense related stats respectively by 10, and then also spike damage, which is times 2 critical damage increase. So overall, guys, Victoria is my number one on the tier list. And the main reason why is because she is a very good PvE unit and a top meta PvP unit right now. Now, the thing is with, you know, the argument between, I guess, like Kizuna and Victoria in the sense of that Kizuna has more longevity in PvE, which I agree. But I think Victoria, I think overall right now is doing so much more um, that she is pretty much like these two units combined in the sense of Victoria is a broken PvE unit, guys. Very good in farming, very good in Demonic Beasts, very good in, you know, uh, unknown content where you need to bring a full unknown team. She's going to be really strong in that. She is really good. And then PvP, she's the best unknown DPS in the entire uh, in the entire game, pretty much acting as a DK Melios for that team. So if I had to really tell someone, like, what is a more valuable character overall, I guess you could say, like, you know, Kizuna is better to have long term. But if we're talking right now, like which character is just objectively better, I think Victoria is better than Kizuna and Nafumi right now. Um, overall, just just this character alone. If we're talking like the top, the strongest PvP team in the game, Nafumi is obviously better, right? Because Nafumi is on is on the strongest team in the game. But Victoria is on a meta team in the PvP. She's on a very strong team in PvE and able to do Ratatoskr as well. I know I know, uh, Merle did a video on her on Ratatoskr as the main DPS unit, and she is able to do that. The way I think of this unit, guys, is DK Meliodas, and I rate DK Meliodas very, very highly. And so I gotta give Fitoria the number one spot. Again, if you wanna argue longevity speaking, um, we could definitely put Kizuna number one, but I'm gonna put Fitoria number one for this, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, but that is going to be my ranking there for the Rising of the Shield Hero collaboration. Let me know what you guys think about these characters in the comments below and where you guys would rank these characters as well and that's gonna be it i'm gonna see you guys in the next video man peace out and have a great rest of your day guys see you later man